Right, Andy Dot, welcome back to the Noise Garage. This is number 27. Uh, we're going to crack on today with some rods along the tailpiece and put the sitting bit in, the bit that I put my fat ass on, so that it's nice and strong and sturdy and it follows the right lines, so it'll be a nicely contoured seat when it's done. Quite important, really, because it's the comfort of the bike and I do intend to ride it for a lot of years. It's, it's not for sale, it's just going to be a constant ride, winter time and so on, so it's got to be right. So today is the ergonomics of the seat, getting the curvature right for mon derriere and uh, Try not to set fire to it. Stick around, stay tuned. Let's see what happens. Right, the thinking today is going to be to try and do the piece that goes, <laughs> Helga, is going to do the bit that goes across the seat here. And as I said just now, it's quite important uh, because this is a, a sculpturing part of the bike that's going to make it, the seat either comfortable or if I cock it up, not comfortable. Um, and I've already put the hopefully the frame in place so that I can bring the next series of rods. I've got to put six or eight rods across here, across this centerpiece for the strength and then brace them so they don't move or separate. And this stuff, um, I've got, actually that's the last one of the two foot pieces that went across the clothes dryer. All I've got left now is the six long ones, which are this size. And rather fortuitously, these are quarter inch. If you look at the difference there, you can see straight away that's quarter inch, that's 316. So that is thicker, which in some ways, as that's going to be for the sitting on bit, that's a technical term, did you like that? That's going to be thicker and stronger, and that's good. Right, cut the first length in. Um, it's going to sit in the center there. That's a case of popping it in the center, but I think I need a bend just about there. So it's got to have a little curve in it. And I've left it over length at the back, just by about 10 mil, because obviously curving it will shorten its length. So there's no use cutting it to length perfectly, then putting a bend in it and find out it doesn't reach, thinking ahead. I think the bend wants to start pretty much straight away, be about a 30 degree bend I reckon, just to give that curve from about there. stuff thicker but it should bend okay Right, just the and we. Now, there's the first one. Bit of a bend in, notched off the back. And then, oops, there we are. Just notched in so that it fits over that weld. Uh, in time, I will grind all these down. When the whole thing's done, I'll take all this off and just all these white welds will get tidied up so they don't poke out the fiberglass. Uh, but that's the general idea with that one. First one, just notched over the weld rather than grind the weld down. Better to grind the metal out around it. Now I can tack that one in. And that will be the main centre spar, just right in the middle, uh, from which, or off which, I can then take all the others. Here we are, centre one. So what I want to do with it is just get, just get it taped in, just for now, until I cut a few more and see where they need to sit. Just guesstimating back here. It's going to be cut to there, but obviously the exact length I won't know till I've got the curve in, so just cutting about an inch over. Cut 
cut another one exactly the same length for the other side for symmetry. soft gentle bend in that from about there. It's a little bit harder because it's thicker but it's worth it. And oddly enough this stuff tends to bend exactly where you say to bend so you end up with straight or you end up with kinks in it. So, a little bit more challenging to bend than the other stuff, but that's the challenge. And the limits of the bench. As it's kind of trial and error, just keep bottling it up, seeing what it looks like. Right, now the profiles on the right, cut the ends at a chamfer just so they fit the curvature of that, that rib. You get a nice butt end on them, there's nothing like a nice butt end. So, chamfer in the end which when you weld it just gives a bit more of a face to weld against okay, okay so I'll take these in now so they're permanently in place and then I can measure the next ones the next one two three four off that start again all right just cutting them all in at once putting the little bends in them to get the curve right, that curve that way, and that way it's kind of a double plane curve. Down to the final nitty gritty of the shape now. You had to say that? Say what? Nitty gritty. <laughs> nitty gritty? Yeah. Why can't you say it? What does it mean? It just means the bottom line, doesn't it? Oh right, yeah. Oh yeah, you're not allowed to say that, are you? No. It's a bit like you smoking a fag in the garage, isn't it? <laughs> right, it's going to mark where, roughly where the curve needs to be, where the, the nitty gritty of the bend is going to be. I'm in so much trouble. Right. I'm always in trouble. Oh, yes, yeah, the depth that varies. I know that. Right, between about there and there. Put a little bend in there. It makes your eyes go funny looking at that. It does, doesn't it? My eyes are funny anyway. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> what? Who said what? Oh, you're deaf as well. <laughs> hey? Is it Mr. McGee? Isn't it? Mr. Who? Is it Mr. McGee? Or Mr. McGoo? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McGee was the reporter that used to chase the Hulk, wasn't he? 
Don't make me angry, Mr. McGee. You don't like me when I'm angry. I tend to bend the metal rods. Whoa. Whoa. Right, let's see if that shit. Or if it works. Probably too much of a bend in that one. Yeah, way too much. Right. Got the curve in it in the right place. So to relax it off a bit. Honestly. You should pay attention when you're watching cartoons, honestly. It's childish. That's it. And this will rest. This particular one will rest on the frame on there, which is cool. I'd be a bit proud. Get the right angle. Right. And now we got steamed up. <laughs> That's it. Put your albums on, Dave. That's it, Blade thing. Hot stuff, man. It's because you're in here. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> things I do. Hey? The things I do. Yeah, but let's not go into that. That was in a former life. <laughs> right, I've set this up. As I said at the beginning, got a wet chamois leather. This is a synthetic chamois, one of those uh, rubber ones. And it's quite thick and it's wet. It's really damp. So that will... Uh, Damp because it won't catch fire then, and uh, also it will stop any sparks going down into the wiring and fusing them together. So it's going to be a little bit more welding than before on this. Wedge to that side. Obviously, the spine center one, let's cock on, is going to be the, the sort of defining center piece, and then that will define the width or the, the place all the others go from there. So getting this right is quite important. Just taking the time to measure it up, get it straight, and then just tack it. Once things are tacked, they're in place, and then you can move them. You can't move them around. You can weld them a bit easier. It's just moved. So four inches from each side. Exact more. Exact Right, tack in the front. Okay, first strike. This side. Okay, I'll save it. Compound weld, tap on top, two on the sides. Okay, nice. Right. <laughs> you could leave me there for hours. <laughs> That's it, right, there's the first one in. Cool off. That's one. Alright, there we are. Got quite a nice curve on that front line now. And it's nicely glued. And it's proper solid. It really is. Obviously being quarter inch um, rod or quarter bar, it's going to be a bit tougher. Um, but with a little curve in it, 
it's got a little bit of spring that way which is all intended I've welded it both sides and then later on the whole thing will just get took off lapped back a little bit and then all the gaps underneath that I can't currently get to will just get tacked in one by one so it's welded top and bottom but you can't do that now because I can't get to it and the chamois working fine a couple of little points there where splatters come off just make a little dot instead of actually burning because this is wet so that's a good little trick if you're going to do it take that off there see there right okay let's get the next one set up yep any ice Ben? Mm -hmm. it's splattery close enough Right, done so far, that's the, right, that's got the basic spars in, um, I've just got to put uh, one in between each one now, there's four more to go in just to give it the strength, it is quite strong but thankfully this, hang on, let's go on that side, if you go down level, now you can see that at the front got that curve which is all important for comfort sitting on the bike this this swathe around here is crucially important and I don't want to be putting tons of filler in it to make it work but at the back it's dead flat so it's got that right proportion which is quite important just getting the rods bent to the right angle so that they sit right okay let's get the last four in It takes ages to set it up because you can't sort of unweld it once it's banged in place. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Have a nice bit? Yep. That's nailed its ass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Inside. Inside. There we go. Right, done. That's that bit. We've got all of those lined up absolutely flat from what I can tell looking from this angle. They're pretty much flat right across to give a nice flat seat. But that curve, hopefully, from the back. That curve is now curved enough to make the seat comfortable at the front. And these angles here, which should curve in enough to be comfy, I don't know, we'll see. Just following the profile of the old seat really, so that that, once I just, because I'm only gonna have a thin pad on it, 
no big fat seat or anything daft. Yeah. Flat disc. Try and tidy it up a bit. So there you go, that's pretty much exactly what I had in mind, uh, trying to come in a comfortable enough position around here, or comfortable enough shape rather, so that the whole thing is, is a joy to sit on. Um, getting the lines right, getting that gap underneath, you need I'd say at least a two or three inch gap underneath for all this stuff to be cool because there's heat obviously going on under there, there's electrics, electrics so on just a little bit of ventilation space but that is it there we are that's the sum total of about three or four hours and i'm very pleased with the result it's not really meant to look good what i'm pleased with is the fact that i've got that row of bows absolutely bang on now i'm not sure i'm going to have a think about it whether i need to uh, brace them or not there's a little bit of flex not much um, they are going to be bonded I'm going to bond a layer of fiberglass over the whole lot and that is very stiff indeed I'm going to use all sorts of cloth I've got some interesting ideas for that so when that's on that will stiffen them up even more so whether they need any more bracing I'm thinking of the weight I picked up the weight of uh, six of these things and it's a good six seven kilos on its own so I don't want it to be too heavy I don't know that's enough metal in there and now all I can concentrate on is getting the, the tailpiece done the back end but that for now just turning out what I wanted to create which was a proper tail section curve that can be strong curved comfortable ergonomic to sit on and so on um, that's been a success I think so there we are another one in the bag so there we go, that's been number 27. Thanks for watching, much appreciated. Um, interesting really, kind of that is exactly as I conceived it in me bonds a long time ago. And it seems to be very easy to produce what I'm thinking and it works. Uh, it just takes time, get it all lined up, getting all the bends right and the curves right. But it's done, there we are, that's the next one. And the final part, I'm hoping, I haven't said this too obviously yet, I did set aside three months for this project and that includes the front end, but it's failed miserably. I'm on part 27, 11, 12 weeks now, almost three months is up and I've only still done the back end. So what I'll be doing as soon as this back end is finished, it will be a case of get it back on the road, get it taxed, start using it again in the bad weather, keep the Triumph from becoming a bog donkey and make it a rolling project as it used to be. This really is the only part that had to come off the road didn't have to come off the road for the front end I can do that as it's going along a weekend I can take the front off do the bits and bobs and then ride it to work Monday it's not a problem I've got some comf uh, some some cunning and, and some fun plans for the front and they really don't need to come off the road not strictly speaking um, not like this anyway so once this is done I can push the next part of the project if it is going to come off the road again and have a real surgery to the front it will be in the new year but for now it will just always have something going on after this is done so there we are that was number 27 Thanks for tuning in and watching The Boys Garage. Appreciate your time. Appreciate all your comments. Keep them coming. Ride safe. See you next time.